Hello everyone, welcome to my channel from Dream to Seed. My name is Jessica and here you'll find videos for beginning and everyday backyard gardeners. In today's video, I'll be talking about a few different watering systems that you can implement in your own garden to hopefully make this season a little bit easier for you. Welcome to this extremely beautiful, warm, sunny day. The first one we've had in weeks. And while maybe not the best for filming, sorry about the shadows on the face. It was either that or squint at the camera the entire time. <laughs> but uh, a great day for gardening. So I wanna know if you feel, how you feel about watering your garden. I know for me, my garden philosophy is I want to do things correctly. I want to do things having good gardening technique, but I want to do them in the easiest way possible and the least amount of steps possible. So up until a few years ago, I was hand watering my garden and that was because I wanted to water the garden correctly and you want to practice bottom watering. So I was hand watering 11 raised beds and it would take me sometimes upwards of 30 minutes to 40 minutes each morning in the summer and that, you know, I have three kids and we have jobs and sports and life as I'm sure you do too. And it um, was becoming quite a burden and I never want gardening to become a burden or, um, or something that I feel like I have to do. It's, it's something that I love to do and I want to enjoy. So comment below if you feel like um, watering is something that can sometimes feel like a burden to you. I know I can't be the only one. <laughs> it's probably one of my least favorite things about gardening. But a few years ago, I installed soaker hoses in my garden and emitter hoses in some of my other beds. And they have been so great in alleviating so many of the problems I was having with watering because not just, it wasn't just a time issue. It was, you know, we love to travel in the summer and go on vacations. And I was always stressed about how my garden was going to be watered or if I needed to ask neighbors to come in and help me and if they were going to be able to do it correctly. Um, I didn't want to put sprinklers in my garden and have that overhead watering, which can be really detrimental to your plants. Um, also, just if I was busy, I didn't want to feel like I needed to come out every day or every other day to be watering the garden. So using soaker hoses in my garden has been a great way to alleviate a lot of those problems. So I use three main types of watering systems in my garden. I use soaker hoses, emitter hoses, and I also still utilize hand watering. Now I have made a video about how to properly water your garden, and in that video I go over how much water your garden needs per week and how to properly hand water your plants. So if you don't want to fill with soaker hoses and you, or you just aren't quite ready to take that leap and you want to just continue to hand water your garden, I suggest just to watch that video. It gives a lot of great tips on how to properly do that and I'll link that below. So the first type of watering system I'm going to talk about is soaker hoses. I love soaker hoses and I use these mostly in my garden and that's for a couple of reasons. One is soaker hoses are great if you have or are trying to water plants that are very close together. So in my vegetable gardens I practice high intensity gardening which means I am planting those plants as close together as I can without causing harm to the plants but I'm also interplanting different kinds of plants to utilize space so that I can grow as much as possible in my garden. And so the great thing about soaker hoses is they're they're kind of water permeable and instead of emitter hoses where you have holes every 9 to 18 inches, a soaker hose will kind of seep water out through the entire length of the hose, um, which is great for high intensity gardening. I don't have to worry about only certain plants getting water like I do with emitter hoses. With a soaker hose, it's going to um, water the entire length of that hose. Um, there are a few downsides to soaker hoses though. The spread of water, meaning how far it will water on, the, on either side of the hose, is only a few inches. So if these aren't really close to your plants, you may not quite get the water that you need. So I make sure that when I'm planting, I am planting fairly close to these soaker hoses, not right up against them, but within a few inches, so that the spread of water is getting to those plants. So another definite pro to soaker hoses is that they're really easy to cut and repair. A downside is though they can split really easily so I have had to make repairs on several of these hoses and I'll show you how I did that in just a few um, but if the water pressure is too high it can definitely cause um, leaks or even splits inside the hose also because these aren't as thick as emitter hoses you know the emitter hoses are made of that really heavy plastic and you only have holes every so often um, with this I don't leave these out all winter long I'm in zone six and it can get pretty cold sometimes down to the negatives um, over the winter we also have very 
wet winters. And so if there were there was any water left inside these hoses, it might cause the hose to expand and split. So I have to bring these in every single winter. But what I do is, is I bundle them up and I label the hoses so I know which bed they were on. So it's really easy for me to go back in the spring and put those hoses right back on the bed that they came from. So now I'm going to walk you through my garden and show you the setup that I have. I will also show you how I use a timer and a hose splitter to more efficiently water my garden. Um, and just so you know, I most of my soaker hoses have either come from Amazon or Gardener Supply. And I use the snip and drip system from Gardener Supply. I really, really like it. I've also used soaker hoses from Amazon. I'll link both below. Um, I just would suggest that you use only one kind and <laughs> not mix them up like I did. Um, the soaker hoses aren't quite created equal, so some of them have a little bit um, faster of a flow rate or a little bit, or the water comes out a little heavier in some than others. So I don't necessarily have um, completely even watering throughout my garden but it gets the job done but I would totally suggest using the same brand or type of soaker hose throughout um, your garden but I also have connected my beds with the raised bed connectors from Gardener Supply which I love and I'll show you those right now. So first I'm gonna show you a little bit how my garden is set up and I'll show you some of the soaker hoses that I have. I like to have my soaker hoses in usually before I plant any plants. There's a few plants like garlic that have to go in in the fall so I kind of have to weave soaker hoses around it. But for the most part I try to have all these soaker hoses in the ground early spring before I do any major planting. So I have 11 raised beds and they definitely vary in size and shape. But I have um, two beds in each what I call zones connected together. So I only have one bed here that isn't connected to another bed. So I have garden zone one, two, two connected here, three, four in the back, five, and six. So two beds connected together. And I can't run one continuous soaker hose throughout the garden, although that would be easier to just water everything at once. Unfortunately, when you have soaker hoses long, you know, they get too long, um, then you're gonna lose water pressure at the end. So I want nice even pressure throughout my soaker hoses. So I have found that I can connect about two beds together and maintain that water pressure throughout watering. So in each bed, I try to create kind of like an S curve with the soaker hoses. And my beds are about three feet wide. They vary, like I said. Um, but that usually gives me plenty of watering in those raised beds. And I can plant plants on either sides of those raised beds. Now, in some of them, just depending on the shapes of the beds, I have to kind of do a little bit different of a configuration. So in this bed, for instance, I'm not quite done. I ran out of an end cap and I ran out of landscaping pins. So... Um, I still am working on a few of these beds, but for the most part, um, they're ready to go. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to change up the configuration or repair these hoses. So for example, last year I had potatoes in this bed, so I only had these two lines. I didn't have the center line because I had much bigger plants, but I'm trying to get um, at least three rows or columns, I guess, of soaker hoses in each bed. So to add, it was really easy. This used to be an end cap and I traded it out for a coupler and then I can just add more soaker hose and put an end cap down there once I get one. And then right here, I actually had a had to make a repair so I had a split in this hose at the end of last gardening season so all I had to do was sort of snip out the damaged part and then I just added this coupler here to kind of take out that damaged part so that was a super easy fix so like I said soaker hoses are pretty easy to repair and here's an example of what I do if I've had to plant some plants before I laid my soaker hoses. So this is my potato bed and you can see I have trenches and I don't want to dig the trenches with the soaker hose in the way. So what I do for potatoes and I have three potatoes planted in each hill. So I'll go ahead and just lay the soaker hose on top of the bed until those potatoes sprout. And once they sprout, I mean I have a general idea of where they are, but once they sprout I can kind of adjust those soaker hoses as needed to make sure there's water getting to the plants. And then I will actually not completely bury, but I'll push those soaker hoses down into the hills a little bit more to make sure I'm getting water to the roots. So I had this water spigot installed a few years ago and it's been great to have water so close to the garden. Um, I, it's too early for me to turn it on so I can't show you the soaker hoses in action, but I will be turning this on in a few weeks once the temperatures warm, warm up a little bit. 
I do need to get an elbow here. I know this angle is super, super awkward and kind of puts pressure on this spigot. So I will be getting an elbow so I can drop this timer down a little bit. But I have a timer here and a hose splitter here. So this is an orbit timer. I really, really like it and I'll link it below. It has some great features on it. It has um, some really specific ways that you can set the hose to go off. So I usually set my hose to go off once a day. And because I have the splitter here, I can water two zones a day, which means I'm watering up to four beds a day. And I usually set the timer to go off every day, maybe every other day, and I will move the hoses to water different zones. So most of my garden beds are getting watered once, maybe twice a week, depending on what's planted and how hot the weather is and if we've had rain. And speaking of rain, this timer has a rain delay on it, which I love. So we get rain fairly often in my area. So you can set the timer to delay 24, 48, 36, however many hours you want in 12 hour increments to, um, or sorry, 24. I think it's 12 hour, yeah, 12 hour increments um, to delay so that if you've had rain, you're not overwatering the garden. And like I said, here I have a hose splitter and I will have two hoses that come off of that and I'll show you how I connect the hoses to each of my raised beds. So here's the hose connection that I have at the beginning of each of my garden zones. So I have this 90 degree bend here and again, this is the snip and drip system, raised bed system from Gardener Supply. So at the beginning of each zone, I have a quick connect. Let's see if I can do this one handed. <laughs> yeah, much easier to do two-handed, but it's much better than having to screw on the end of a hose. So these are just the quick connect that you just snap right on. And here's how I connect the beds using that same system. So you have four 90 degree bends that connect to raised beds. And normally you can have this pretty flat and tight against the ground using landscape pins. I keep mine a little bit loose because we have to be able to get the um, weed eater in between. But this allows me to connect two raised beds with that um, quick connect system on either end. And so I can water two raised beds at once. Move into the shade. <laughs> so the second type of watering system that I use are emitter hoses. And the difference between soaker hoses and emitter hoses are soaker hoses are going to have water sort of seeping out the entire length of that hose. So like I said, they're great for plants that are spaced closer together. But if you have beds like for instance, your landscaping beds that have bigger plants that are spaced farther apart. Soaker hoses may not be your best option because then you're having, you're using a lot of water in those spaces in between where there's plants are. And also those plants are bigger. They're going to need more water than maybe those soaker hoses can give you. So that's where emitter hoses are a great option to use. So emitter hoses are a little bit of a denser material and they're going to have openings every six to maybe 18 inches, depending on what you buy. And it allows for again, bottom watering, but very focused watering where you need it. And so there's a lot of pros for emitter hoses. One for me that I love is because they're made of a lot denser material, I can leave those hoses out all winter long. I just make sure that at the end of the season, we're draining all the water. We actually use a, a small air compressor to kind of blow out a lot of the water. And then I can cover those up with mulch and leave them out. So I'm not having to pull those back out and um, pin them all in every single season. Another pro is that there's so many different configurations that you can use with emitter hoses, depending on the size of your garden and how it's shaped and all the different sizes of plants that you have. But I also think this can also be a con. Emitter hoses can be a little bit more complicated to use because of all the different pieces that you need to have to go with them. They also can be a little bit more expensive because of all those extra pieces that you have to buy. So the brand that I like to use for emitter hoses is Rainbird and again, Got it off of Amazon. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's others that are just as great, but this has worked really, really well for me. It came with everything that I needed to get started. So this is um, half inch emitter tubing. It also comes with one fourth inch emitter tubing and it has holes every 18 inches. Now I do sort of wish that I had gotten um, ones with holes a little bit closer together. I've had to go back and add some more holes, which is easy to do. That's another plus about emitter hosing. But it comes with all these great accessories, all the kind of couplers and elbows and um, tools that you need to kind of get you started setting up your emitter hoses. So now I'm going to take you to my raspberry beds and my front landscaping to show you how I personally use my emitter hoses. So I just flipped this hose upwards so that you can see the emitter hose a little bit better, but normally it sits a little bit more that way. So you can see the emitter holes in this hose and this will water this raspberry plant right here. And it's every 18 inches. So here's the next one. So as raspberries love to do and send up a million runners, if I need to add more holes to this, it comes with these little kind of barbs that you can add 
um, if you need hose a little bit closer together. So it is kind of nice. Um, it's easy to add more if you need them. And again, this is great because I can leave this in all winter and I actually just recently uncovered it. So this is how I use soaker, or excuse me, emitter hoses in my berry beds. I'll show you how I also use them in my landscaping out front. So here's what the beginning of the system looks like. It has this filter right here, which is really great. And it also has a pressure regulator to make sure that you're using a safe water pressure throughout the hose to make sure you're not damaging it. So here's how you can use the different sizes of emitter tubing to work for your particular garden. So this brown tubing here is the half inch emitter um, hoses. And I just made sure that when I was laying it, that on each of these larger plants, they had at least one, maybe two openings that were able to get to that plant. But for plants like these black eyed Susans, I didn't wanna have to turn that hose and run it all the way back over here just for one plant. So what you can do is you can add this one fourth inch emitter tubing to particular plants in your garden. So I don't don't have to waste a lot of hose just to get to this one plant. I also will use it if I decide to plant annuals, then it's easy just to add a water source to those. So this is just another example of why emitter hoses are great. They're easy to kind of customize to your particular needs in your beds. So the third way that I water my garden is I still use hand watering, but not too much. So I water all of my potted plants by hand, and I have found that there's a few plants in my vegetable garden, particularly my tomatoes, that do a little bit better with hand watering. And they're fine on the soaker hoses if I need to leave them for a little while or I can't get to the watering that day. But when I go in once, maybe twice a week with a nozzle sprayer, and I'm base watering with a lot of water kind of all at once, and really give them a deep, deep water, I have found that I get less leaf curl, and they tend to just do a little bit better. So I still use hand watering on a few plants in my garden. One thing I hate about hand watering is having to haul a hose back and forth. They're bulky and I hate having to wind them back up. So recently I was contacted by a company and asked, they asked if I would try out a expandable hose for them and I said sure. I'm kind of set in my ways, but I will <laughs> give it a try. And actually, I was pleasantly surprised. So the first thing I noticed about this hose is that it's super lightweight. My seven-year-old could haul this back and forth, no problem. And when you hook it up to the water and the water pressure um, hits it, it starts to expand like a snake. We were all completely intrigued <laughs> watching this, um, but it expands up to 50 feet, which is great. And when, the, when you turn the water off, it retracts back in and it's easy to store and super lightweight. So here's what all the kit comes with. It comes with a bag for storage. It comes with an attachment so you can store the hose on your house. It comes with a tin setting nozzle and I actually tried this nozzle out. It was pretty powerful. So I was pleasantly surprised with that. It comes with instructions, extra O-rings, Teflon tape and a clamp. So very quickly, I'm gonna show you how to do a repair on this Spark Moments 50 foot expandable hose and you'll have everything you need to make a repair in the kit. So over time, if you notice leaking from where the hose connects with the nozzle sprayer, it's probably from this inner blue tube right here. So what you're gonna do is remove the brass connector and then the black connector from the hose by simply pull, uh, gently pulling. And then you're going to remove the sealed core from the connector and you're gonna be smarter than me and not use really sharp scissors to do this. But you're gonna gently push and that sealed core, will, sealed core will pop out. Then you're gonna take just a normal pair of scissors and cut off the damaged part of the blue inner hose. And then you're gonna push that sealed core back into the hose. And then you're going to push the sealed core back into the black connector. And then all you have to do is uh, tighten the brass connector and tighten the tail cap back onto the hose and you're finished. And that's it. I hope you learned a little bit about how to use soaker hoses, emitter hoses, or maybe even hand watering in your own garden. Comment below and tell me how you like to water your own garden. I love getting new ideas to use in my own garden and sharing as a community. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and I also have a Facebook page. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.